Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Welcome to r slash today I effed up, where we get to see some of the most hilarious mistakes that people have ever made and have cared to share with us on the internet. Now please be warned that some of today's stories are a bit more on the NSFW side. Nothing too scandalous, but if this isn't your cup of tea, feel free to check out one of my other videos. But with that said, let's get into our first story by user slash STE boy. My girlfriend and I have been together for about three years, and I'm deeply in love with this girl. She is decent beyond words. Fun, funny, and frankly, I couldn't imagine a better relationship. Her mother had offered me her grandmother's ring for our engagement, which I considered a tremendous honor. After dealing with the anxiety of totting around a family heirloom for two weeks and leaving it in the possession of a jeweler for cleaning and resizing, I just wanted to get the engagement over with. I know that might not sound like the most romantic way of describing my engagement, but I was nervous. I get home, get down on one knee, and she says yes. It was a moment I won't soon forget. Then, then I got creative on really burning it into my memory. Now, in my opinion, everyone, more or less, does their engagement announcements the same way. Holding hands close up with a ring on, or the couple's pick with the open hand across the dude's chest with the ring visible. It's been done to death, I thought. I proposed to my now fiancé that we do something funny and different, and she agrees. We settle on taking a picture of me, completely naked, laying in bed, with her hand in the foreground, covering my crotch with the ring on. The picture is hilarious, and we send it to my family group chat. I mean, this is my naked body after all, clearly for my family's eyes only. As it turns out, the picture was taken on live mode. When you held it down, my girlfriend's hand would move out of the way, leaving a perfect shot of me as naked as the day I was born. Grinning from ear to ear, doing finger guns. I received a message from my brother-in-law informing us that the picture is live, that my sister was the one to discover it, and he follows it up with a picture of her hand in a shocked state of bewilderment. My mother got it too, same mistake. Her first unsolicited pee pick at the age of 61. From her son, no less. Needless to say, it's a story that will be told despite my protests for the remainder of my days. And I absolutely love the comments who are just all over this guy for a picture. Honestly, just get over it. Give the man some privacy. He's already suffered enough. Our next post is by user slash throwaway9847294 and OP is about 16 or 17 years old. It all started when I sat on my bed one day, just minding my own business. Think I may have been watching Friends at this point, but that's not really got anything to do with the F up. So I was sat on my bed and got up to go to the toilet, as anyone would usually do when they need to pee. Suddenly, I get a sharp pain in my groin, but think nothing of it. I've had pain before in that area, and it's gone after about 10 minutes or so. Pretty much, the only way to describe the pain would be like having needles stuck in your scrotum and left there. Sat back down, wondering what the F is wrong with me, can't even manage to stand up and go to the toilet properly without hurting myself. No one else was home, so I couldn't really ask for help, so I lay back down waiting for the pain to subside. Half an hour later, my parents come home and pop into my room to see if I've woken up for the day. They see me lying on my bed and ask what's up. Too embarrassed to tell them that my balls feel like they're being constantly stamped on. I just told them I had a bit of a stomach ache. And I'd be okay. That was the end of that for now. Couple of hours later and it's still the same. And I'm starting to feel quite nauseous too. Take some pain medication and head back to bed. Lying down seemed to ease the pain a little. So I carried on watching more friends. At this point I hadn't eaten anything all day. I felt I'd just throw everything I'd eat back up. After a sleepless night tossing and turning, unable to find a comfortable position to sleep in, I decide to tell my mum that I don't feel too good. A couple hours later, I'm at the doctor's trying to describe to him what was wrong with me. Being the idiot that I am, I decided to skip the bit where telling him one of my balls felt like it was being torn off. He sends me away with a diagnosed food poisoning and tells me to keep hydrated and to rest. The rest of the day was pretty much the same, me lying in bed wondering why the hell the pain wasn't going away. 
Next day, and it's still the same. Right, this is getting serious now. It's been almost two full days, and it's still not gone. It's time to tell someone what's actually up. Try to tell my mom without trying to describe my testicles to her in too much detail, and her face looks white as a ghost. 30 minutes later, and I'm in the emergency room at the hospital with a guy cupping my balls asking why I didn't tell anyone sooner. I cried. I didn't know what was going on, and neither did any of my family. Into surgery I go. After being told they do everything they can to save the little fella, but with the length of time I'd had the pain, things weren't looking hopeful. I wake up hours later without a clue as to where I was and the surgeon walks in. One of the hardest conversations I've had in my life. I'd lost one of my testicles. There was nothing they could do about it. So yeah, that's the story of how I got testicular torsion and ended up losing one of my balls because I was too scared to say anything. So to all my guy friends out there, any sort of pain, whether big or small, go get it checked out immediately. And don't be scared to tell people about it. Better to be embarrassed than to have one testicle for the rest of your life. And don't worry, OP can still function fine, except he's only got half the manpower left. And I really like this story in the comments from user slash master beaten pie. Did they replace it with a rubber ball? They did that to my uncle. One night we're getting drunk and he says, check this out. He whips out his testicle and starts hitting it with an empty beer bottle. He then tells me it's rubber and he can't feel it. And an even better one from Gang's PP1. At least it wasn't a metal ball like one of my friends. They replaced it with a metal ball for some godforsaken reason when he was young. He only discovered it when he was about six and playing with his toy magnets. And here's our next F up by user slash egg blossom. So, I'm 19 and living with my parents while I go to college online. My family is uber Christian. Pentecostal, I'm supposed to be without a drive for passionate hugging until marriage Christian. They called me a tramp because I kissed my boyfriend in front of them. They believe I'm a Satanist because I have a septum ring, not because of my TST membership. They leave for church every Sunday at 11 a.m. At 10, they usually come into my room to ask if I'm coming with them. I do just to avoid the drama of declining. This morning, I woke up at 9, so I figured I had some time to mess around. Boyfriends on the other side of the country, and a woman still has needs, you know? I pull out the trusty pink 8-incher from the hidden sin compartment of my closet, and go to town. All is good, all feels good. When the deed is done, I wash off my adultery tool and leave it on my dresser to dry. Standing up. That mental image is very important. A giant plastic ding-dong standing straight up on my dresser. As if my dresser is some perverse garden. And the plastic ding-dong is but a bloom growing from it. I relax from this point, turn on Monsters Inc, move my succulent to the windowsill, typical lazy morning stuff. 10am rolls around, my dad knocks on the door. Egg Blossom, can I come in? Of course, I let him in without a second thought. Are you coming to church with us? Sure, usual time. Dad suddenly stops talking. He glances at the dresser and awkwardly closes the door. I'm confused, wondering why he would just quietly leave like that. I follow where he had been looking, and I'm instantly overcome with an embarrassment so deep I choke. Of course, of course, on church Sunday, I would forget to put it away. Of course, on church Sunday, my father, someone who lives and breathes Jesus, would see the giant and obnoxiously bubblegum pink 8 incher of his teenage daughter. Of course. I just really hope he doesn't think I was having fun while watching Monsters, Inc. And OP comes through with an update as to what happened after. We get through church normally. I'm miserable, my parents are vibing, they're one with the Christ and feeling it. Maybe feeling it a little more than usual. I then realize my dad is definitely worshipping louder than usual. I really hurt this man. The service ends and we pile into the truck to go home. We start to drive and my mum tells me to stop looking sad in church. My dad then takes this as his in to rant and rant he does. 
For what was easily 10 minutes, I hear about how disappointed he is. Now, he doesn't mention the plastic ding-dong or my sexuality by name. Dare such foul words cross his lips. He just rants about who I am. How he wishes I was the way I used to be. How he misses the way I used to worship. And how he wonders why I want to be a demon. Funnily enough, this is not the first time I've heard those sentiments from him. Also, imagine discovering your child having adult fun, and you take that to mean that they want to be a demon. And I love this interaction down in the comments. Just go old school and say it's a doctor recommended massager for headaches. Act totally clueless and horrified if he insinuates it's for any other purpose. And OP replies, Father, how could you even envision such a dirty thing? Shame! And here's our next post by user slash Ivan Slimer. I went to Walmart to pick up some stuff. First item on my list, bottle of the old faithful KY jelly. I walked into the pharmacy section to find all that paraphernalia is now locked in a glass box. I stood there in disbelief. I have to ask for access to slip and slide now? Am I 14 again? Seriously? I was about to walk off, not wanting to ask a stranger to unlock the box. I mean, vegetable oil is cheaper anyway, right? But then a female employee just happened to walk by and ask if I needed the box opened. I sheepishly nodded my head yes, trying not to make any noise that would attract unwanted attention from the 20 people in the pharmacy line. So out of her pocket comes the loudest keychain full of keys I've ever heard. People in the toy section turned to see what the noise was, and then made their kids look away. Everyone in the pharmacy turned and looked at me like, Oh, Karen, look at that fat creepy guy who's too good to buy Jergens like normal people. So as she's unlocking the box, she bangs those keys all over the glass, making even more noise as she opens the door. In a haste to get out of the situation as fast as possible, I reach in and grab my preferred jelly product and turn to leave. She yells at me with everyone watching. Excuse me, excuse me, I have to carry that to the front for you. Seriously? Please tell me no. Shampoo is starting to feel like a reasonable option at this point. So she grabs it out of my hand and starts walking. I don't have to shake the bottle because this very energetic woman, 4 foot 11 fireball, is dramatically waving hello to every single employee with my tug goo in her hand. Meanwhile, I try to invisibility walk five paces behind her. Once my creep walk journey was finally at the front of the store, this woman led me past all the other customers and hands the jelly to the manager on duty pointed at me and said in the loudest socially acceptable voice for someone watching a playoff football game, this is for this man and pointed at me. The manager on duty, yet another woman in my life that silently judges me, started walking without making eye contact and says, come this way. Well, I had planned to do that, but after this public Walmart humiliation, I'm not sure I can muster the concentration to make this purchase necessary. We made our way to self-checkout as she held the bottle with two fingers in an outstretched arm like a dirty diaper. That's when I realized, with all the unbelievable, embarrassing display of following the hand waver to the front, I didn't get anything else on my list. My hand basket was completely empty, so my entire purchase was KY Jelly. The lady looked at me and said, is this all you need? Well, yes, because I left my dignity back in the pharmacy. And that is the story of my last Walmart purchase ever. And here's an idea that I saw in the comments earlier but can't seem to find anymore, is what you can do is you can just buy out all their stock, sit at the front of Walmart and resell it for like double the price, saving people all the humiliation. That would be just about the greatest business plan in the history of humankind. But alright everyone, that's it from me for today. I hope you enjoyed this little video, and if you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel for edit videos every second day. But with that said, that is it from me. I hope you all enjoyed, and all I want to do is see you all here next time. See you later guys.